I mean, hopefully this I does it. Wait, 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 wait. I'm going to edit this. I'll edit this out this, and we'll fix it up. So don't you worry. Don't you worry. It'll be all good. But Andy, today we have, I'm going to do a proper intro for you because the main thing that Andy McCoy is in the house, the legendary Andy McCoy, he's back, has a new single and video, Take Me, I'm Yours. That's out now, the video. And I believe- And now, day after tomorrow, I the day, Oh, is it day, uh, it's Friday, July 22nd. You're right. Andy, help me out. Friday, here. I believe. Friday, July 22nd. Uh, okay. Unless I be misguided and lied to you again for a change. Okay, let me do it over then. Here, three, two, one. When Dave Grohl met Andy McCoy, he said, I've met my first rock star. Well. I have met my first rock star too. Big influence in my life. You and know what? It got embarrassing. They kept dedicating a song to me. One school. Two is like, okay, stay there. Then comes the third one dedicated to me. And a fourth one. Yeah. Uh, it got kind of, old. I got embarrassed. You shouldn't be. You know why, Andy? I'm going to tell you something. You're the original. You wanted to go. Okay. So I just saw a video of you I'm playing with my. You, I'm not an object. You know? Yeah, but you, but you know what? Let me tell you something. I just saw a video of you, one of my best friends who I was in a band with, who made me move out of an, We moved together. We lived in a one bedroom apartment. It was Ryan Rock. I've been through that chick kind yeah. of shit with Austin Suicide. Yeah. Now, okay. You know Ryan Roxy, right? Oh, Ryan, he's lovely. I love the dude. He's he, my buddy. We were in a band together. I played too. Not as good as me. Maybe if he practices a bit. He harder. wants to be you. He oh, he took your moves. He took your style and he admits to it. You're a big a lot of people have done taking a lot of me. But uh, <laughs> hey, he's sent spreading joy, sharing joy. If I meant to be the messenger, let him fucking take it and fly. I'm not really that way. I'm not bitter about it. I, I think it's cool. I impress millions of people around the world. The way I dress, the way I look. So now all those motherfuckers got some Romani culture in them. If they even understand it, I don't know if they understand it. I don't understand. I, want I to, doubt. I doubt it. <laughs> I, I don't think they understand it. But okay, so let's start. Everybody who's watching right now, you, you know Andy from his band Hanoi Rocks, but he has new music coming out, and it's. Out. Let's talk about first your new music. Can we? Let's talk about that really. Okay. Ah, uh, you mean the last album I recorded? The one that's coming out. You have the one that's coming out yeah, on Friday. Books, John. Yeah. I was a real jukebox junkie as a kid, you know, because I didn't want to listen to Frank Sinatra, so I'd run up and put on fucking hardcore rock and roll, you know. Uh, so it's self reflective, you know, kind of way. And then I thought, what well, a friend of mine who sadly passed away called David Bowie told me, Andy, you ever got downtime? Make a cover album. I did pinups because I had to wait between contracts. And it became the best seller till then. So I thought of what DB, the Bromley Devil, told me. Huh? That is just what I do. So I booked the studio for a couple of months and the outcome will be out the 5th of August. The single is out, first one, uh, day after tomorrow. And don't get misguided by the chick. It's not no girlfriend. It's my youngest daughter. <laughs> you know, because I know there's going to be a lot of blabbering about Andy hanging around with teenage girls. Like, what the fuck? Like, no, 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 no. Uh -uh. No, so your daughter's in the band. No, she's in the video. She's, oh, she's in the video. Okay, she's My in the video. My other daughter is in the band. Your other, okay. How many? Wait, how many daughters do you have? 
that you know of? Well, two is too many. <laughs> Put it that way. Okay. okay. I feel like me and you, this is going to be a good conversation. Well, this is, this is going to be a good, because this is the first time. I, <laughs> I, I love it. Okay. Crazy how time goes by. Time now goes by like really quick. Grown up and I'm a, oh fuck yeah! I wasn't about when they grew up. I was always touring. Yeah. So now I try to give the most I can give of my time to them. Yeah. It's time to catch up. With the boy, it's too late. We don't get along. I don't know what. It's just scared of me. I don't fucking know. You know, people told me, my, my sister told me, always calls my sister in arms. And I heard he's scared of me. I don't know why. Why be scared of your own man? I never beat him up. Mm -hmm. Not once. I could have. I would have liked to a few times. You know, you have to keep your temper back. Very true. Very true. You have to be keep the temper back. It's yeah. very true. It's not a hey, it's not easy being a parent. It's the hardest job in the world. I realize it's psychologically very, very deep. And all of these three kids, they're different. To get them into their level uh, takes a bit of brain work, you know. Are the boys into the guitar playing? They play music, the boys? Anything like that that rubbed off on? from the and, uh, my, my older daughter, she's a songwriter. There's a fucking great singer coming out. I bet on a mega hit. What's her, what's her name? Yeah. Tell the, tell the audience her name. Sophia, Sophia Zida. You know, we're not tenuous, we Mexican blood. And um, it's very different from what I do myself. Uh, it's got a lot of Caribbean vibes, so then again, you hear me. I like, uh, get me a beer. Uh, excuse me. That's okay. Take your time. I'm distracted. I, I got to excuse me. How many does it say so? Well, yeah. To work with your own daughter, who's got a fucking better rear than me. Or my piano player, who's almost perfect pitch. But she's a one take wonder. Really? Uh, there's going to be a singer coming out called Three Words. And if that doesn't mean an impression on people, they know fuck about music. I'm about quality. I mean, I hung out with Bobali, all these people. Fuck. And I value real real artistry yeah yeah you yeah let me tell you something the music that you put out that had that in the past always great always. oh yeah yeah an album back you know, to that you i you got I, I smoked the spliff so my sort of train sort of went so free that time and the album i have six songs but I thought should have been mega hits. Mm -hmm. But due to lack of promotion, lack of like the wrong record company, the wrong A and R guy, you know the fucking business. I know the business, and it's so crazy. So I wanted to make an audible for the world. And I hope it'll catch a few ears and open their minds. I mean, of course, the arrangements will change to suit me. Mm -hmm. But basically, 
I'm very proud of the album. Probably the most colorful record I made, and I've never been known to make black and white records. No, yeah, I don't think you made one bad record. To be honest with you, you every record that you put out, all the different styles that it came out, it's always sounding like Andy McCoy. Yeah. And you're you're a listener. I'm the artist. I hear every fuck up. That's but, all I hear. But the fuck ups are cool. I think they are too. Oh, I agree with you. Uh, I don't. I don't I'm want. Not. I want. It, that's why it's rock and roll. It, when it's polished, I don't like that. I like it raw. I want the edge. I want the, the vibe of it. N rock and roll is supposed to be reckless. It and should have, I, I so agree with you there, bro. I want the streets, please. I don't want it polished, uh, or unless the band can play it like that. Otherwise, it's motherfucking dull. It's dull, and I don't like it to be dull. I hate it when it's. It just. I like it a little loose, but for the audience to connect with the audience, I want the audience to get the message of the music understand it but feel the vibe of it you know and that's it what has you, to be bloody well played that's what need to be nice right andy i want to tell you while i have you here because it's a big honor to have you here and i'm going to kiss your ass a little bit because you're well, in, it's okay i'm used to it you're used to it, but let me tell you something songs like even the early stuff before all the other stuff you did you know you know the ba your oh, ballads. I you, you, really early, I but know. Your ballads that you write, they're so mm. great. You write such great ballads. You know, a lot of the fast songs were actually written as ballads originally. We just changed the tempo and. Uh, I suppose that it still goes on today with me. Mm -hmm. So I like to work on the piano, then I work with the guitar, and I try different arrangements, you know, left and right, and on the piano is a bit different than a guitar or yeah. a fucking, this 10 string fucking mariachi monster I fucking found. I played it in the studio. I just got used to it. And then I'm like, okay, I love it with an acoustic guitar. And I played it like a 10 string. And I was like, hell, I can't play guitar anymore. What happened? I got dementia. I'm <laughs> sick in the head. I'm fucked up. <laughs> and I realized I was doing all this because it's an open D. Yeah. And I was, well, Fucking up what do you what do you let me ask you andy what are you listening to now these days when you uh, hang, yeah. lately what i've been listening to is a lot of nashville shit and bobby blue brand always one of my favorite singers ever i used to go and see him in san diego at this little club he'd appear once a month now he's rest in peace met the blow had a few drinks with him, like I did with Johnny Cash, but that turned into a four-day binge. Johnny Cash, huh? Well, I, I didn't realize he had been so dangerous till the second day. I was like, how can this old man keep up with me? Hell, Annie, yeah. I take this. He want me. Hell yeah. Wow. And then it was, zew. <laughs> you know how it goes. <laughs> And he's just straddling came by. Yeah, I remember that. It was in Detroit somewhere. Wow. Hotel. Wow. <laughs> That's pretty big. It's pretty cool. Uh, it is what it is. Nothing it, more, nothing less. It is, it is very cool. Very cool, man. I want to I want to ask you. Getting together. <laughs> uh, you know, we were young and we were wise. Yeah. It was a whole different uh, time. It was a whole different time. So, uh, now, let me ask you, uh, for your new album coming out, you guys, are you yeah. ready? You guys will be coming to the States as well and doing some shows yeah. out there? Yeah. 
I had to give fingerprints and all because I lost all my American papers except my social security. Oh, my God. goodness. Oh, what a nightmare. I, <laughs> how does, well, I want, I want to know. have to go through the bureaucratic system, you know, so I got my papers back. I, Andy, I got to I got to ask you, when you're traveling in the airport, does the jewelry stay on? Do you keep it on or do you have you're, you're the guy holding up? Yeah. The they're all pure. They're all pure. They're all gold or they platinum. Don't, they don't nobody, ring. But they don't give you a hassle. Would they take this off or if you have, you know, other stuff on? They don't give you a hassle when you go through TSA. Yeah, because they don't ring. They the don't ring. Business. You so got some nice jewelry. All about carat. Wow. Platinum. Wow. Uh, uh, I don't have so much in my wrists. I sometimes I go the way up. Now I can uh, ask when you're playing. Say it. <laughs> when you, but when you're playing, when, let me ask you: when you're playing guitar, you have does, you Legos kicked in by those. So I can tell you that. <laughs> tell you where I went. <laughs> okay, I want to ask you: your main guitar. Tell me about your the main guitar. You know, if you had one guitar that you had to choose from, which would it be? I have the second last one. Tone is the I just made, and lately. It's become my favorite. I've always played many of Firebirds and the Spores. Or a shitload of them. Uh, that one's the mind is, you know, they got a longer neck, mm -hmm. more frets. I can go whinging up in high A easily. I think it goes to B, high B. Wow. And the neck is endless. And it gives me more space to, you know, I never played the same two nights in a row. I change it every night and that's just the way I am. Yeah. Otherwise I get bored. And if I get bored, no one will have fun. No. No, because I fucking show it, man. You, you do show it, man. You do show it. I want to ask you now, let's let's talk a little bit, a bit about working with Bob Ezrin when you did Two Steps from the Moon, because for people out there watching, there was two uh -huh. versions. You know, how was that working with Bob Ezrin? Well, I'll tell you, it was very cold. Hmm. We ended up in fucking Toronto, right? Coldest winter in hundred and twenty some motherfucking years. So where do I hang out? Too cold to go out. I think I went out once or twice by limo and door to door service kinda, you know, the usual. Mm -hmm. I stayed in a hotel bar. I can tell you one thing. That bar bill, after a month and a half, was not cheap. <laughs> <Not like that. laughs> Just fucking write it up on me list, you know? <laughs> there we go. Hi, Mr. McCoy. It was like the shining, the usual, Lloyd. The usual. You go up to the bar. <laughs> what else you... You gonna be alone in your hotel room, yeah. sulking? Oh, miserable me! I'm fucking yeah. up. I should be home in London. Nah, nah. Get pissed. That was my. That was it. That was the experience. Yeah. I mean, two steps from the move. A great record. What? What? What, what did it come? I out? think it was. Too commercialized. I think Back to Mystery City is way better. Back to I Mystery City God. was a great one, but you know yeah, what? It's commercial. I agree with that, but I've never been about commerciality. Well, now the second single will be so fucking mainstream. Never, nobody's ever heard me being this mainstream. This really this may so this this record is gonna be uh, uh, it's good mainstream. Yeah, it ain't bland, it's got a lot of kick in the ass in it. Wow. I'm excited to hear this, man. 
I'm excited to hear it. And and uh, you're playing the whiskey, right? I think you enjoy the album because you can't get bored. Every song is so different. Yeah. But the whiskey, you're doing the whiskey go-go in Los Angeles, I believe. I saw something. Yeah, yeah. Make money for the family. That's all right. And the fans will get to see you play. It's been a while since you've been to the Not States, the right? Family, familia. That's, the you know what? That's great. That's great. Now you, such I'm a big... married to that shit. I, and now you were living in Los Angeles for a little while, right? A little. A little yeah. while. I, I actually... For a long, long time. For a long time, there yeah. Like an eight-year period, I didn't even visit. Europe. I forgot about my own people. How did you like Los Angeles living there? Well, I moved down to Del Mar mm -hmm. and with my mistress. It was there. It's like a little, you know, Del Mar. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Smoke, search for town, smoke weed, take it easy, relax, yeah. babe. <laughs> <laughs> it's very it's very relaxing i lived in burbank so maybe it's almost the same a little bit oh yeah it, it's towards that by even more laid back it, it, it was that you know there was a while ago when i was uh living in la i had a roommate for a short time when i got divorced and it was uh steven adler of guns and roses oh steven how is he doing steven's i'm worried doing, about steven's doing good steven always talked good about you Always said nice things about you. I never had a problem with Stephen. I love the guy, but I don't like what's happened to him. No. Well, he's not to himself. I always taking care of myself. Hell yeah, I smoke weed, but so what? Yeah. Whose business is that? I don't flog it. I'm not a beta. I do it in my own free time. But Stevens, for some reason, has really been painted black. It's like paint me black and call me Maria. You know yeah. what I mean? I shouldn't say that. I know it's racially okay. Uh, but there's no other way I can put it. No, no, he is a good heart. He has a good heart, Stephen. He made his own bed and. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, Stephen. You fucked up. Yeah, this is what and it I is. Him, but I still love him. Yeah, he's still the body from when I was a young man. You know. Yeah, yeah. It it, 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 <laughs> it is what it is. I want to, you know, Andy. I was reading about your world, and it's like so, you have. There's a whole nother life that people might not even know about you have the you wrote a book also an autobiography yeah. how is it oh, there's getting... so many books i don't even know but you how many books did you write only one but okay. other people keep writing you know but your book your tales your stories oh that's sheriff mccoy yeah it was released in the united states had to really well in the uk that i know huh I never follow the saves. I yeah. only look at my bank account. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a capitalist. I hate commies, man. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I know, I know. So we had, <laughs> so, so it was around '84 when Two Steps of the Move came out, and then you guys were. Right. Out, that's around when I saw you play in Lemoore's in Brooklyn, and what a show it was! I'll never. I got because before I, that, I, it was. Thank you, because all. We tried to do in the end was give people good vibes and forget about reality for an evening and show them this is real motherfucking rock and roll, not heavy metal, not that crap. It not was not metal, no. Classify Hanoi as heavy metal. I, I never understood that. Never no, understood it. I never got it either, you know. My friend, because you're far from a heavy metal band. You're a true rock and roll blues rock band, and and I remember, I remember you guys coming out. I remember Razzle, the way he was playing, and you had the it. Your band, it's everything that Guns N' Roses took the ingredients from and ran. 
with it. Everything. Wow. Well, after the years, they did it as long as Izzy was in the band. It was good. Was so Izzy, was, was, he, he was, was he traveling uh, with you guys? Uh, it went down and apparently I nicked this woman. And uh, all of a sudden we were no longer friends. Oh, is that what happened? Yeah. This is almost like a Brian Jones, Keith seen Richards thing. Boy Jones, man. I ain't seen him for years. Really? Uh, I like to apologize, but I can't apologize for destiny. You understand me? Yeah, I do. I think very metamorphically, you know. I can't fight destiny. It was meant to happen. We fell in love at first sight. Felt love, huh? Yeah. Almost like Eric Clapton and uh, Patty Boyd type of thing. Uh, I believe very close, if not identical. Yeah. And it's very dodgy when it's one of your best friends, you know? Yeah, I feel some guilt about it, but then again, I gain more. Yeah. When, hey, when love walks through the door, you know it. Oh, hell yeah. Hell It'll yeah. Hit It'll hit you. Like... I could never disagree with that, man. Yeah, that's true. That is true. So that that part of your life. You don't have any salad. You know what? What are you drinking? What do you got there? This is grapefruit juice with gin. Is that uh, good? good? Is tell that you, yeah. On a hot summer day like this in the inner city where I live, uh, it's dusty, the exhaust from the traffic, it's a refreshing drink. I get it. I totally get it. So it's now, yeah, but I totally get it. Speak, you know. So I was telling you about about when I saw you guys play and just the rawness, the rock and roll, and it's like the timing for you guys because music wasn't ready for good rock and roll. They were into everybody playing so many notes with no soul. You come out with the guitar with soul and you're playing, which I love. If my mi corazón, amigo, if it's not there, I don't want to play. It's got to come from the heart. Otherwise, it's fluke, it's fake. I never play the same two nights in a row. No. Never, ever. I find different variations, whatever you might want to call it. Yeah. And so now you got, after two steps from the move, of course, everybody knows about the tragedy of losing yeah, Razzle. Oh, right. What is Oh, the camel. Yeah. Yeah. I quit for a while. I managed three weeks and what was it? Three or four days. And I was like, fuck it. I'm climbing the walls. Really? <laughs> you know what? I'm gonna buy me fags, man. I, I was never a smoker, but coffee is my thing. And I can't give up coffee. I really like coffee. I don't drink coffee, man. Really? It makes me shaky and sweaty. But I, I drink really strong Indian tea. And it's got more caffeine. But yeah. I don't get the shakes. I don't know what it is about coffee and me. That's so funny. We and don't I'm... mix. Well. Yeah. Irish coffee. Yeah, yeah. That would uh, work. I... Irish, I love good espresso. I'm like insane. I'll have like six, seven cups a day of espresso. I have the machine and I make it. It gives you a boost, right? Yeah, yeah. And you know what? When I don't do coffee, yeah. I'm in a bad mood. I'm grumpy. Okay. Stay on the coffee, dude. Please. <laughs> I'm not hurting nobody. It's just coffee. That's <laughs> it. <laughs> and it gives, you know, the drunk test. Oh, they won't find nothing but caffeine, and they can never charge you with that. Oh, no. It's just me being hyper from New York. 
screwed, man. <laughs> but Andy, the combination of being from Brooklyn and coffee together, it makes you a little too hyper because you're excited and you're in people's. <laughs> yeah, Brooklyn can be a bit hyper. It's it's a big hyper. Yeah. You know, so let me ask you right after after the loss, when Razzle passed away, because that took the whole career, everything shifted for you guys. Yeah. You were, were you there? I, were you there when the night I, Razzle drove off? I, I, seven years of work thrown down the drain. Wow. Um, I was clean, but after Razzle died, Bring it two ounces of you know what. Yeah. And I just give a shit for a while. And that was a tough I one. I was at the hospital with table, Tommy D, mm -hmm. who had to call. I mean, how do you call and say somebody's passed away? Very hard. So I just said something very serious has happened to our manager. Get the guys in the band. Everyone like Mike, he was in a bow. Came. And I just told him, please, Russell passed away. And you know, I never even got it as much as an apology. From that motherfucker. You know who I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to give any names. Why would I give him fame? Fuck him. Well, it seems to be very... Every time he sees me, he runs away. Because he'll know what I do. But that's our business. Wow. Well. Do you remember your last moment with Razzle? Ring bullshit like Axel did. No. Hmm. I'm a street fire. I'm from the inner city. He's from fucking suburban California. You can never compare them. What we know. You, you, you read me, bro. I read you loud and clear. Right. Okay. So that's done with next subject. No, next subject. Okay, next, next subject. <laughs> you know, it's, you know, it's, 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 yeah. And I didn't mean to go down that, that road with you, but I, I totally agree. Let me ask you, um, after that, after that whole situation and all that stuff going on, um, you ended up doing other stuff as well. You got that you played with Iggy Pop for a little while. Oh, Jim, yeah, yeah, he's a wonderful bloke. He's a yeah. one. You know, my, my buddy played guitar for him. Whitey Kirst was his guitar player. Oh, right on, right on. You Jim's know Whitey? Guy, you know, he's a good guy. Honestly, he's a good friend. Well, for whatever be. And the freedom he gave me to rearrange all his songs, update him. Uh, I suppose I should be very humbled about it, but I'm not. I did my job well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think Jim agrees since I'm on all the greatest hits, live albums, and this and that, and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, you did You did great with him. You really I did. wish him the best, you know. He lives down in Florida nowadays. So I can't tell you where. Yeah. Unfortunately. No. That would be out of protocol. No. no, don't tell, don't tell anybody where. We keep it a secret. <laughs> <laughs> we don't want no, no. But I got it, and I want the audience to really understand your catalog of music because it's so there's so much out there. Because you, I know you'll get a lot of stories. The Hanoi Rocks, the Hanoi Rocks, but also the Suicide Twins, which was another album. S Silver missiles and ah, that started the acoustic thing. Yeah. But I like. Was... I thought that was great. But yeah, I think it was a good, it's actually a solo album. I took nasty along. Uh, in case it all would fail, I'd have someone to blame. <laughs> That's the truth. 
And it's basically a solo album. <laughs> yes, you can see by the writing credits, you know. <laughs> That's funny. Was that originally the working title for Two Steps from the Move, Silver Missiles and Nightingale? Well, that- they called it the Suicide Twins because we had acquired some very bad and heavy habits hanging out with Phil Linatron and this and people like that, you know. Yeah. And uh, these were not necessarily good habits. Yeah. But they made me forget about the mundane. The strongest psychological painkiller in the world. It stood up first, but it stabs you in the back. Took me 22 years to get rid of that fucking monkey on my back yeah yeah and you now know, it's for a year <laughs> now you also now also for people out there you you, you released too much too much ain't enough but then you had that which uh, in 88 that was another no, it's never enough it always runs out so in it true it it's true it, it does it has to work out you got no choice yeah, yeah. To me, it was common sense. You know, you can't, you yeah. can't, you you got to just snap yourself out of it, whatever we're going through in life and go, okay, enough's enough. Well, that's what happened with me. One day, I went, what the hell? After 22 years and that shit, I went back, what the fuck am I doing? I'm ready to suffer. And boy, did I suffer. Yeah. It was paid up for 22 years of high life. And I felt like scum. I didn't want anyone to see me. That's why it's called withdrawals. You know, you know I, I totally... I, I, me off that people like Nicky Six talk. Total bull. I saved a bloke's life. You saved Nikki's life. And he tells stories that I beat him up with a baseball bat. I used to play baseball. I know how to use a fucking bat. You think he'd be alive? <laughs> Hell no. Hell no. No. But he's after the money. I'm after the art. We are very different. He's a little farm boy from somewhere in Seattle. Shit bum fuck hell. I'm from the inner city. It's a big difference. But that's where me and Johnny, my uh, cousin-in-law, Johnny Thunders. Johnny Thunders. Who got murdered in New Orleans. What now? I heard a story about that because he he was found I in the hotel. About it, but I don't know if I can speak open. I have to ask for. Uh, actually, I have to ask the family if I can talk about it. About Johnny, we, I know everything that happened. Do you know? Do you know? Uh, I saw- Willie was there. Willie Deville, and that's Willie, Link, of yeah, Willie Deville, yeah. And he just checked in when they carried his body bag out. He told me it looked like a fucking Pringle. They poisoned the motherfucker, telling him it was that when it wasn't. Wow. I would have fucking checked it. But Johnny wasn't like me. Johnny was always in a hurry. But I missed the guy. I still miss him. He was Johnny great. Was he was he was incredible. Uh, one he of my favorite. He, he was unique. Unique. Oh, he he was just one of my fa- one of my favorite songwriters. He was not a queen. Yeah. yeah. He had a case Sarah Sarah, a great album. I mean, it was just incredible. And he started getting his head together. I still can't so sound why he went. Wanted so badly to go to New Orleans. I told him it's a dodgy place. Be careful there. It ain't LA. It ain't New York. 
We know those cities, you know. New Orleans is a different motherfucking scene altogether. It's a whole different scene. You'll get me. I I get you. I totally get you. It's sad. It's been fucking 20 years plus. I see his daughter every now and then. Uh, His son. He's seen an out of Riker side. Wow. I'm not doing good. Uh, but I tried to help. It's familiar. You know? Mm-hmm. And if I happen to have the money, I help him. Yeah, it's a, it's a set. It's when the New York Dolls were doing their show, when they got back and Johnny's not a part of the band, I go, it's not the same. And I remember I became friends with Arthur King. Oh, they asked me. It's not I the said, same. I ain't feeling Johnny's shoes. It's, that would be a rip-off. It, it wasn't it might the be same. Family, but uh, I'm not Johnny. I'm Andy. Yeah. It, it wasn't the same yeah, vibe. It didn't sound the same. I yeah. saw him, played with him. They opened up for Hanoi Rocks. And I mean, Andy, people like you know, your guitar. I was disappointed. Yeah. I don't mean to put the guys down, but that made me see what an integral part Johnny was in the band. And his guitar sound, that wailing. Not to make it scream like that. Uh, It takes a lot of guts and a lot of fucking poker face. And he managed it, man. He was good at it. Yeah. Oh, I used to see Johnny all in New York. Very sensitive. Everybody thought it was a hard bloke. No, John is one of the most sensitive guys I have met. Really? Yeah. He'd cry in front of me. And I'd cry with him. It made me cry. That takes a lot. You know? <laughs> yeah. You, you know what? Because he was so. He seemed so tough on the stage and his tones and his finger and his swagger and his attitude. It was, you can't imitate that stuff. And off stage, he'd be so shy. Unless he put the wall up, which we all do in this profession. Yeah. We block it out. And we turn into cunts. I'm sorry to say that. But it's some kind of self protection thing you know don't get too close i don't fucking know you yeah yeah to totally get and it I'm very good at reading people you know but mistakes happen still sometimes yeah yeah Th- that era of music man it's something that it's it should never be forgotten. The music that Johnny, that oh, Willie DeVille, yeah. that that you no album. Oh my God! Every child, Steve Jones, my so alone. There is fucking Phil Lynott. There's like this and Glenn Matlock, this and that. You know, all my buddies are on there. Glenn I was Matlock, that's right. to play on it, but I couldn't do it because I was abroad. Somewhere fucking else. I can't remember where Asia. Yeah. Oh, what a masterpiece. Central. What a masterpiece album that is. There's not one bad song on that yeah, record. Yeah, it's a and gem. And people should get acquainted to that if they want to know what a real rock and roll is about. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I want to ask you, because you, we're talking about what to teach people about real rock and roll. Can you, and if you can't, it's okay. Top five vinyl albums that are important to you that p- 
people should listen to or that meant something to your world? Okay, let me try my best. Of course, I might forget something. I'm just doing my best. First of all, Bobby Blue Bland. The title of the album is His California Album. Okay, number dos. Uh, hell, this is hard, man. <laughs> oh, you put me on the spot. I have to give you a little challenge, Andy. Start on Main Street, Rolling Stones. Three. I give it to Johnny. New York Dolls' first album. Great one. Okay. Some of the second sucks. The production sucks. Yeah. The fucking front of the ground. Whatever. Fucks it. Uh, excuse me. It's probably one of my... Oh, Go ahead. Fuck you. <laughs> no. Not my daughters. Okay. Uh, and okay. Where were we? How we're on number four I'm now. At? We're going to number four. All right. Now I've got a... Miles Davis, Bitches Brew. Okay, yes. Uh, Five. Think of Think of me. Anything by Sabikas, any album. Sabikas is a flamenco guitar player who was like my biggest hero among with Django Reinhardt. People say Django. That's not the way it's pronounced in Roman. It's Zango. Yeah, it translates to something like someone who sees with their eyes open. I Got know. you a bit of trivia. In the there it is. There. Look, you keep learning, dude. Well, look, hey, listen to this. You get a round of applause. <laughs> Hell yeah. Yay. <laughs> oh, man. Andy, this is... I love the lead belly bitch. I keep looking at it. Do you have oh. real? I look at it more than you. Uh, no, it's okay. I, I Let me tell you something. What the hell the guitar I played. It was a cheapo... Uh, but hold on, hold on a second. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on one second. Hold on. I want to share this with you. Since uh, so Joe Dog, they get a better look at this. Yeah, I know the make, but I'd have to check it out. Man. Nine four six. It says. But he, Joe did this all with pencil. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And those were badly made cheap guitars. But he insisted on using them all through his life. Really big things like J200 Gibson. So it's I a great, a it's a, when I saw this, Andy, I go, Joe, I got to have this. I just. Oh, hell yeah. I want to buy it. You want to flog it? Look, see there. I'll buy it. And there's Joe's little. No, I'm gonna... I got a better idea. There's... Once I get to LA and give it to me as a present, I give you a painting. You know what? I think we might have to. You know what? We might have to hook up you and I. We maybe one day I, I'll be honored to get the jam with you one day and play bass sometimes with you. you oh, hell yeah. That would be I cool. Love, I love jamming. I would love I'm to jam. Love you know, with that. It, re really quick before we get out of here and let you go. The, the agency that's booking you guys, Artists Worldwide, they got me my gig with Didi Ramon. I played with Didi till he passed away. This is my body. I'm going to show you something. Oh, my God. Didi, Didi Ramon and I became like best Didi friends. Fast. So, so Didi I was... A, it already, even though I was younger than him. So Didi, we played Japan, Didi and I, and he didn't have any oh, swag. Oh, I was his bass player. He played guitar. Wow. Wow. So Didi drew, uh, drew a picture of me and my son. Look at this. 
Didi was like all around. All he was all around. This is supposed and to be me. Seventy-seven in London. Wow. Uh, so, yeah, I, we were friends. And then, I got to uh, play with him for he five years. Whacked away. Hell, life's a trip, man. Life is a trip, man. Andy. I'm enjoying the ride. I'm surfing the tide, dude. <laughs> you're here you're here you're here you're still doing it man it's 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 a pleasure to even talk to you and and talk about your new music and uh just to no, tell everybody i think you love the album oh i can't wait to hear it you got a music taste and you show dd and whole body of mine and you knew about johnny and my cousin in law huh you don't know your music bro you know what? I'll show you what. I appreciate much of the others. Gracias, amigo. Here's where I'm at with the. Can I tell you? I'm going to tell you, Andy. I'm going to tell you a story. How I got the gig with Dee Dee Ramon was I. He was living in L.A. and uh, yeah, right. he, he was, was living in L.A. He was living That's in L.A. Right. Yeah, I remember when he stayed there for a bit. Yeah. On Highland, Highland, and by La Brea. Yeah. I know the wrong place to be. You don't want to be there. And I told him that. Junk dealers, blow dealers, you know the scene. And he was doing art and he was doing the shows. And then uh, he just decided to check out. He decided, and he, he told me, he one day he said to me, because he wasn't, and just to clear the record out there, he wasn't doing anything. He'd only smoke his weed. And then he goes, all oh, my that's friends. Are, that's he, sweet. That was when he was together in his set. He, he just he just goes it's all my friends periodically unfortunately i realized really. he he said all my friends are gone he goes i've had a good life and then he ended up doing it he wanted to check out he didn't want he was about to be 50 he didn't he was like peter pan he didn't want to grow old but he was oh, a sweet he was a sweet okay. guy i got that vibe too yeah we spoke many times okay like, what are we going to be like when I'm 60? I'm fucking turning 60 in a couple of months. It's nothing. And I think he misjudged a lot of things, you know. But, you know, he was about seven years older than me, eight years old. Yeah. So it was kind of like a big brother was misguiding me not guiding me <laughs> <laughs> but hell yeah, we had a good time ain't that all that matters 60 is still young i only got good memories of Dee. i remember once i was down in st mark's place in new york he comes up with his fleet of guitar i happened to walk on the road <laughs> And he went up behind the hands. You remember his fucking thick New York accent. Oh, dear. I was, what am I going to do with that piece of crap? <laughs> I get him for free anyways. You know. <laughs> you know uh, what? Can, you, you, you know what? Um, want me, I want to share. Can I share something with you, Andy? Yes. Well, I'm going to share something with you. Watch this. Okay, show me, bro. And Andy, this this part right here, I'm not going to put show this in the. Me. I'm not going to put this in the interview. I'm going to because I'm going to edit out. I'm going to. I'm going to edit this out. But this is just between you and me. So the okay. last show I ever did with Dee Dee Ramon, right? We were endorsed. Oh, yeah. We were endorsed with a company called GMP Guitars. Uh, uh, it's just, just before he passed. He, th we did a show. Didi and I played the El Rey Theater on a Saturday, and he died. I think it was on a Tuesday. So, I, like that. I remember because I thought it was so stone song. Love you till Tuesday or whatever. It was a Tuesday. So check this out. There was a girl in LA called Texas Terry. And after Dee Dee Ramon, I remember that bitch. You remember Texas Terry? So yeah, so there was uh, not a good 
person. Dangerous. Yeah. Dangerous Not person. Good. No. Yeah. She came to the cat club where I used to play with Slim Jim Phantom. He yeah, owned the club. Yeah. So I was the, the house glory, band. Glory, glory, I watched this. The yeah. town. Uh, I don't remember. I can't remember. This I can't. Story. I can't remember. So Terry, there was ne one day because if you played with Didi, it was like soldiers. You never would share the mic together. So Didi came to my mic and he shared the microphone with me. And I go, well, I go, what's the matter with you, Didi? He goes, I love you. You're my That's best friend, like right? So here's a picture. Yeah. Terry gave me this magazine, and there's a picture. If you could see, that to me. I That's see, me. yeah. And, and there's Dee Dee. You never shared a bloody mic. That is so rare. Never shared the mic, right? So check it out. So Dee Dee. You know how rare that is. There he is right there. With this I mean, they open up 50 gigs for us. And yeah. I've and, thrown live way more time and now, than that. You see this guitar? That he's holding in this yeah. shirt. Dee Dee, after the show, he go. We were supposed to play Seattle. He goes to me, take my take yeah. my guitar. You never know what's going to happen. I go, Dee Dee, I don't want to carry your shit. He goes, just take it. You never know what's going to happen. Your job. your job is to play, not Look, carry. That's the Dee Dee's last guitar that he played. Oh God, Danny, how much you want? I will never sell it. You know why? I, I, he was like a brother to me. Is that crazy? He, he took, he took the paint off himself, and it was. Ah, figure us out. Too much wheels. He loved that shit too. He, like, he loved, he loved it. it. So he, he took that, and then here's the shirt that was that he wore, that he took off, yeah. of the gig. That he was wearing, and he cut it himself. I'll never get rid of it. No. No. I wouldn't even want to bid on it because it belongs to you, dude. He was, he was, he was a great guy, and uh, the la and that was the last songs we had to have. And the last songs but we ever played together. Again, again. Yeah. It too was too much it, too soon. Too much know? too soon. So the last three songs we ever played, Sheena, Chinese Rocks, and Blitzkrieg Bop. Yeah. Oh, Chinese Rocks. Yeah, there was this big argument. Johnny would moan to me. Dee Dee claims he fucking wrote this. Motherfucker. I fucking wrote this song. But then again, I don't have no real clarity. I think they wrote it together. They wrote it together, they... but there's two endings. Yeah. There's the I last know, chord. I know, I know, I know, I know. So that's, that was the trick, because Dee Dee would tell me, I wrote it this way, he wrote it that way. So one time when I learned how to play the song, I learned it the Johnny Thunder's way. He goes, you can't play it like that. That's not the way I wrote it. That's how you talk. I'm like, oh, I, I figure that. I know Dee Dee. I knew Dee Dee. <laughs> and, uh, and uh, uh, this is so, uh, man, <laughs> I this have this discussions about this with Johnny, you know, uh, and yeah, that motherfucker, and you know, Johnny's real thick New York accent, that motherfucker, trying to steal my son. <laughs> I was like, all right. But the way I like heard both sides, it seems like they worked on it together. But they won't, both wanted to claim the song. They both wanted Why to claim not it. just split it 50 50, for God's sake? What a great I'm more a diplomat than them. I can tell you that. What I a great song, that. right? What a great song that is. Oh, fucking masterpiece. Just the slide, how it starts off on the FDG. It's just so great. Da, 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 da. Somebody it's... called me on the phone. They said, hey, is Dee Dee home? You want to come and talk? Want to take a walk? 
Wanna get a ride on them Chinese rocks? Uh, oh yeah. It's poetry. Uh, it is the words are just genius. Ah, uh, they're very in a city where I'm at. It works like rap steel here. It ain't changed. No. No, it, it hasn't changed. changed. Yeah. I'm looking but forward to catch. I'm I look, Andy. The older I'm wiser, and we stay away from the crap. You got to stay away from the crap. You know why? You know, that band that they were going to do with Johnny, and I believe it was still I Bader's. know, I know. I remember that. I remember that when they tried to do it. They tried to do it. But Johnny and Dee, Dee got into a fight, and I think Dee, Dee might have bleached out the clothes. There was some kind of. Well, I told you Johnny was very shy and that made him put up a wall and that made him look aggressive. Uh, and he had my eyes, jet black eyes. Yeah. Oh, it scares people when we stare. And I suppose it freaked Dee Dee out. I knew both of them, they were like my brothers. Yeah, he he would get freaked out easy, Dee Dee. Yeah, I asked because I was a few years younger, you know. And uh, I believe the song was in the end. I've heard so many stories, but I also heard it from both blokes. I believe they wrote it together, and they started arguing about publishing owners, you know, the publishing ownership. That's what I believe. Because yeah. it's a beauty, it's a classic to me. It, 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 it's, it's a classic. It really is. It really is. Oh, man. Holier than us, man. That was, you know what? That was the song that I auditioned with Didi. And when he heard me play it, he goes, when do you want to come back? And that was it. We played no, one song, and that was cool. it. How cool is that? that Good was for it. you. Good that, for you. That was it. That Job was that, that, that was the done. one. Job well done. Job well done. Yeah. And you know what, Andy? Job well done for you. I'm I'm just happy that you put in new music out. I'm happy you're here to tell your stories. I want everybody to check out the links yeah, down below. I am when I turned 50. Don't retire. I, I was just sitting in bars and smoking spliff. I was, this is no life. No, no. Don't, don't retire. You got, and the record's on Cleopatra oh, records, I'm correct? I'm never going to retire. I've understood in this line of work, you know, uh, I don't think there is a retirement. No. You retire. Oh, so there yeah. is that door. You got yeah. too much going on. You got too much good rock and roll to give. And everybody who's watching, Cleopatra Records links are down below. And a gift is meant to be shared. That's right. And I got that gift from above, from a higher force. I don't even try to write songs. They just come out. And parts or songs and blah blah blah. But I owe it to the rest of the world to share it. That's what I believe. You do. If I get free, hell yeah. That's that. I said you that water, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Hey Andy, let me that ask you. Was, that was a bad joke. <laughs> no, it's I get it. <laughs> let, <laughs> Andy, let me ask you something. You paint. Do you do you still doing your art and painting and all that? Can you see that? I can't Let's see. Show my latest work. I'm showing this first. It's smaller. Wait a second. Okay. This is on my. Oh, wow. Wow. Yeah. How do I get it straight? Right there. Well, right there. I see it. Right there. You the got other it. way. 
It's going to show. No, it's straight. It's right on my side. Wow, that's cool. And then there's more like what I learned from Andy Warhol's. But this shit is getting way bigger. Ah, uh, hell. I hope it transfers to it. Oh, it's, it's cool. called fucking pussy and a half. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Oh, that should be you know, behind you. That looks I, great. I, I oh, Andy, that's cool. Oh, sweet. I'm glad you like it. That's Andy, that, Andy, listen to me. You sh you need to do your interviews with that as your backdrop. That looks so cool behind you. Ah, some pussy. Yeah. It, it, looks, <laughs> it looks cool. Look at it. She said, he says, every time he comes to my room, there's naked blondes jumping around. Oh, it's a, that's great. Now, do you sell your artwork? Are you, are you selling them at all, your paintings? Oh, yeah, all over the world. Oh, man. And they're not cheap. Then they're not I, cheap. Uh, no, look at all the work. Uh, if you look at the detailing, that's not overnight. Dude, that's about a month of work. I could tell. There's a lot of detail in that. How long have you been painting for? How long has it been? Well, you know, originally I was supposed to become a painter. But then I fell in love with a fucking piece of wood with 60 wires. And it took me on another road. Really? I didn't touch a brush for 30 years. And when I got retired, I was 50, I started again. And yeah, it came back real quick. Now this yeah. painting, this I'm painting behind you. Yeah, Andy, that, that painting behind you, how long yeah. did that one take you to do? Uh, that one. Well, I worked on other paintings, like, in between. But altogether, time spent on that, probably a month. A month. Pretty incredible. Which means, give me 50 grand or get the fuck out. <laughs> 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 That's a good one. Well, you know what? For, how about for birthday parties? Do you give Do you give any freebies out for a birthday gift? <laughs> I don't need anything. <laughs> I'm gonna have my 60th. You know, I've told everyone give it to charity. That's beautiful. Don't bring me anything made of glass. It'll be broken by the time I get home. Hell, give me cash. Give you get, what, <laughs> let me ask you, what's your charity that you that you would like? Uh, young poor artists who are from poor areas. I was born. I'm from a banker family. Uh, I was basically born with a golden school. Mm -hmm. and uh, you know what? Young artists there. There's so many unprivileged ones who can't afford paint and stuff. So that's where I try to and instruments for the poor who want to play. Because what the hell else do I know? How come I'm fucking going? Speak about sicknesses and illnesses I haven't got a clue about. I'm not a doctor. I'm not my mother. Hell. So I see where it's befitting. Yeah. And it's for the poor kids who can't afford instruments or paints or tuition for uh, that kind of thing, you know. And believe me, I give them lots. But does it count? 
That fucking dash, it comes and it goes. It only waits to an end. That's the reality of it. Mm -hmm. That is. Andy McCoy. Take me, I'm yours. I'll be out Friday, July 22nd. We got 20 seconds left. Yeah, we got 20 seconds left. Hey, Andy, will you come back on again? With you. It was great. It was great chatting with you. Will you come back on again? Mm -hmm. We'll chat more. Love having you on. I take your word for it, though. I fucking come back with a knife. Now, I'm a shit. Amigo. All right. Thank, Thank you for being here, man. Thank you very much. Thank you for talking with me. Of course. Of course. It was an honor. It was a fun conversation. Grain of thought, so to speak. Not not everyone gets it. No. Trust me, if we had longer to talk, I'd be talking to you about Motown and doo-wop, all the stuff that I grew up with in New York. Barry Gord is like a godfather. You know, he's a reverend now. Yeah. Yeah, I know. He's like my godfather. Really? I love it. I love any of advice about the business. He's a good man. God bless him. Great music. And God bless America for fucking sake. Especially with all the shit going down in Ukraine. Oh. That everyone hates, even the Russians. See around here, you know. They can't suss it out. It's what the fuck's happening in that little fucking midget's mind. Fucking call me fuck. But he was in the KGB. Apparently, there's a photo of me drinking with him in the late 70s. Really? Yeah, it scares me. I hope not. I hope it's legend. I want to see the photo. <laughs> yeah. I'll get to the negative side. Burn him. <laughs> to hell with him. Yeah. It's crazy times, Andy. Yeah, very strange times. All these prophecies from the Torah are coming up from, from the Bible. Mm-hmm. Information will travel from one part of the world within a second, like we are doing. I mean, that's just one example. I can go on for hours. We'll talk again. You know what? I'll let you go. We'll talk again. We'll do another. I'll get in touch with Tommy. I got to thank you for being on the show. It's been a pleasure. A a true pleasure. I like the way you think. You're a good man. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank God you, Andy. You. God bless you, my friend. Be well, okay, buddy? Thank you, Stephen. Let's be in touch. And I sent you the link for the, uh, Andy's new music video. It comes oh, out on p- Friday. please. Yeah, please do. And uh, yeah. send me the link and I'll edit everything good. Tell Andy, thank you for your time. Hey, that painting yeah. behind Andy, it looks good yeah. when you do the interviews. Yeah, we have to do like that. <laughs> now I want to do another that. interview because it looks great <laughs> like that. All right. Yeah. Thank you, my friend. Yeah. I appreciate okay. you. Um, 